Good morning. Daniel Linder here, marriage family therapist for 30 years, practicing in the San Francisco Bay Area, individual and group and couple and family therapy. I am an addiction specialist, a relationship trainer, and I created the relationship model of addiction, which I'm going to be presenting to you during these videos. And again, what my goal is, what my objective is, what I want. I want to be a guiding light for you. I want to be a source of inspiration on this very difficult, treacherous, oftentimes treacherous journey that you're traversing through. And that is, you're getting out, you're transitioning out of unhealthy relationships that feed addiction and into emotionally nourishing relationships that support recovery. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be continuing today from last week. And last week I started presenting about the stages, the three stages of recovery, again, from the relationship model perspective. And the second stage is self-care, self-work, developing a relationship with yourself. And this happens, this stage of the recovery happens after sustained stabilization. That's a sustained period of, a sustained period of abstinence or sobriety. And it's I, I think of that as the breakup. Okay. But now we're going to be focusing on this second stage. And the reason why I want to focus on it today is because I want to give you some tools. I want you to have some experience that you could practice or something to do that will help you develop this relationship with yourself where you could feel it and experience the shift of what happens when you begin to emerge and uh, start taking care of yourself and operating from within. It's very, very, very powerful. So I want to go back. I, I presented to you the poem that I wrote last week, My Best Friend, and I, I see that as a really powerful tool that you could use in a, mi like in a mindful practice by uh, printing it out. You could print, I suggest that you print, out, print it out. I sent you the PDF last week and read it through, read it through a, a few times, and then begin to really kind of go through it with a fine-tooth comb. Uh, which I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how to use this in a minute. But um, it's, the idea is to use it as a mindful practice and begin to uh, see what comes up for you when you read through the poem and see where you are with some of these, w the words that I've expressed to you. So I'm going to do this myself. I'm, going to, I'm just going to kind of explain some of these things and tell you some of uh, what comes up for me when I go through the poem or have gone through the poem. So to beginning with, I started as my best friend dangles all I ever wanted or needed within. Dangles all I ever wanted or needed within so I could feel safe to be myself fully, to come out fully, be myself. You know, what inspired that was Elizabeth Gilbert's book, Eat, Pray, Love. It wasn't the book, but the woman, I saw a video of her talking about the problem that human beings have in relationships, the basic problem, and she likened human beings to porcupines. And what she was talking about is the problem that we human beings have in relationships is that we need the warmth of each other's bodies, the, the, the connection, the feeling of connection to each other, and that and that kind of love that grows out of that and the intimacy that grows out of that. But invariably what happens, being porcupines, is that we, get, we tend to get too close in our desire for love and warmth and connection and we invariably get impaled on each other's quills. We kill ourselves on the other person's stuff. We get too close and we get killed. So she said that the basic challenge, the biggest challenge that we have in relationships is to somehow learn to maintain a safe distance from each other, a safe enough distance and space from each other. So to be able to get close, exchange, dialogue, interact without getting that close. So in other words, we have our own little cocoon, just like I say in the poem. We, have our, we, we, we learn, we do this internally, we create, uh, we can, you can create this cocoon, a safe boundary around you that within that space you are safe to be yourself and express yourself freely, truly, spontaneously at all times, anywhere because you're not 
going to get that close to the other person. You're not going to depend on the other person to provide the safety or to keep you safe or to respond to you in a way that makes you feel good. You're going to be a, a whole autonomous, contain, self-contained individual. So that's one thing. That's what you can do when you have a relationship with yourself. The next part of the poem, you, my best friend, I respect me, trust me, I trust me, I accept myself, I understand myself. What does this mean? And how great it is for me to be able to say that I respect myself. This, when you go through this, this is about asking yourself, do I respect me? What is it about me that is deserving of respect? Or do I want to be respected by other people without really respecting myself? What is it? So I look at myself. What is it about me that's deserving of respect? What do I respect myself for? I respect myself for having an integrity and a consistency and throughout my whole life of really caring and wanting and loving people and wanting to connect deeply with them. And I know that that's all I ever wanted. That's really what I wanted more than anything else, that connection and understanding. And that's what I go for. I live, I go for what I want. And I walk the walk, in other words. So that to me, I respect myself for that because that's true, that's me, and I live it. Uh, I say what I do and do what I say, that kind of thing. So I feel, so now I go out in the world and in my relationships respecting myself and still looking for respect from other people, wanting to be respected, but not depending on the respect of other people in order to respect myself. It's already there. Now, trust, same kind of thing. Well, it's, you know, trust and respect are different, but what comes up? Do I trust myself? So what I'm talking about here is uh, do I trust my, my sensibilities, what, I, what the information that I'm getting in my body, the signals that are, that are coming from within my body? Some people uh, refer to it as intuition or sense. Or you, you are a vital and infinite source of information that you need to make decisions in your life and to live your life and to act and go through your, and to relate and to be in relationships with. And... So the question I ask myself is, do I trust my, do I have access? Am I aware of these, this internal intuition or these senses? Yes, I'm aware. Do I trust them? Do I believe that they're accurate? And do I heed them? So if I feel like I'm feeling unsafe, and I may need to distance myself, I may need to run, I may need to protect, um, uh, or I feel safe and I could open up, but I trust inside uh, to act according to what I'm feeling and what I'm getting, the information that's coming up from within inside of me, and not dependent on interpreting from the outside whether I'm safe or not, or how much to come out, or whether I feel close, or whether I feel understood. I trust whether I know those feelings, and I look for the inside myself for the answers and act on those, that information. Okay, do I accept myself? Most people, like I said before, well, many, many of you in recovery are externally based. In other words, your well-being, your self-worth is dependent on how other people respond to you or how other people perceive you or how happy you can make, make other people. And um, that's where your, your well-being and acceptance comes from. For me, I accept myself how I am. So unconditionally, I, I, I accept that I'm a mixed bag. I'm not perfect. I have judgments. I have reactivities. I have my idiosyncrasies. I have my stuff that I don't handle every situation right. And, but then I have these other qualities of, of, that are really helpful, worthy, valuable, and are the key that enable me to connect and feel love and express love. And, um, and also... I feel like I'm making a difference in a lot of ways. So that I can accept myself as I am, mixed bag and all. I am a mixed bag. I'm not trying to be better or more than what I am. I just, I'm a unique, talented, inherently worthwhile, valuable person, and I live 
I kind of just do the best I can to be Daniel, to be myself, to be authentic, and to be present with you. And I accept that package called Daniel. I accept myself. I don't feel bad about myself. I mean, sometimes I do, but overall, the net, I feel really accepting of myself. This is who I am. I'm comfortable in my body. I'm comfortable in my skin. I'm comfortable being myself. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this more with you. We're going to wind this down right now because there's so much in this poem that you could use as a tool, mindful practice, to begin to develop the relationship with yourself. I'm going to, I'm going to continue in the next videos just to, I want to show you how you could use this uh, for yourself. So until then, the quality of your relationships is the quality of your life.